Hi everybody, welcome back to the shed. This is part 25 of our Trumpeter 1200 scale HMS hood build. In part 25 we're going to finally give the old girl some teeth and start to do some of the armament on the ship. And I'm going to start this week by building the seven four inch guns uh, which are all positioned on the shelter deck. These uh, twin four inch mountings were actually replacements. The original secondary armament of the ship were uh, five and a half inch guns which were mounted along the side batteries and some on the shelter deck as well. Some of the uh, guns were replaced as late as 1940 I think it was uh, in, one of those, in one of those later refits. These new four inch guns were high angle uh, weapons uh, that were designed for anti-aircraft use as well as uh, anti-ship uh, use although uh, I think their effectiveness was fairly questionable uh, particularly against uh, other ships. So although I'm going to build all seven I won't actually be ending up using them on the ship uh, and that's because I've got some uh, 3D printed 4 inch guns coming from a company called Micromaster in New Zealand uh, they should be here later on this week uh, or early next but they won't be here in time for this part of the series so we'll just have to catch up on them next week. I did want to build the guns with the Pontos uh, detail set just to complete the series and just to show you how they go together. Uh, now I know that lots of people uh, having already paid for the Pontos Edge brass set won't want to spend any more money on 3D printed parts and that's why I wanted to complete the model uh, with the Pontos set. Once I get the 3D printed parts I'll probably make the uh, seven, the set of seven uh, Pontos modified mountings available for sale so we'll come to that uh, a later date once uh, I've finished the model. So it's been a long time uh, coming before we've actually been able to do any of the guns and weapons on the ship. Uh, it's quite a step forward for the build. So as usual we'll get over to the bench, lay out the Pontos parts with the trumpeter plastic that we need uh, and we'll get these guns built. Okay I've already built two of these guns from the uh, Pontos set with the trumpeter parts as well. I made life hard for myself with a couple of areas but uh, I've now got uh, preferred method for putting these together so I'll use that for the next one that I build. So this is one of the trumpeter four inch guns and they're really quite good. The mounting shield here has got lots of detail and very fine riveting. Uh, the sighting ports are moulded in and it's not a bad shape at all. The gun barrels themselves are hollowed out uh, using the slide moulds on the uh, trumpeter sprues so they're good. The trunnion sides have got some detail on them as well. The simplification really is with the breeches here at the back and these square boxes here which are meant to represent the shell loading cradles uh, but they're obviously very simplified. There's no tread plate effect on the base either except for these little wings at the side. They're, they've got some representation of the tread on. There are also a couple of um, ejector pin marks on the base as well. So they would need sorting out I think. But overall I don't think that's a bad effort from Trumpeter and most people will be perfectly happy with those. They're, they're okay. So that's the Trumpeter part. The Pontos set adds quite a bit of detail to these guns and I've made a couple up already just to find a preferred method of putting them together and the big difference really is the detail on the shell loading cradles here at the back 
So they're quite a bit bigger and they've got the detail of the actual shell holder on top. We have some sighting equipment here at the front and the gunner's seats are also provided as well uh, in etched brass which is folded up. There are a couple of sides to the trunnions here which are added and that fills in the space here at the side of the open shield. So that part fits into the curve of the front of the shield. And Pontos also provide some new etched brass barrels which are obviously hollow at the end. Uh, they're a slightly different shape to the trumpeter supplied ones and they're slightly longer as well. But you do have the added work of adding all this etched brass and it does add quite a bit of time to the build. So you've got to be prepared to do that. Uh, and I think it took probably 10 minutes to put the trumpeter uh, gun together and the best part of an hour to build one of these uh, Pontos detail mountings. And I struggled with the first one in a couple of areas, particularly about the shell loading uh, equipment at the back. But I've found a preferred method of doing those now, so that's what I'll be uh, doing in this part of the build. Uh, I'm going to build all seven, so obviously I've done two already, so five to go. Uh, so I'll get the parts out and show you the breakdown of what we've got to use and then we'll go on and assemble the third gun. So the first thing that we need are the trumpeter plastic parts. So we'll start off with the uh, base. We need the breeches from one of the guns. And we need the trunnion side, so there's a left hand and a right hand trunnion side. So those are the trumpeter parts that we need. I'll give those a clean up in a moment. Uh, but we also need the Pontos parts. So we have a pair of brass barrels. And this is the Pontos etch brass fret it's number 13 and it's basically an armament uh, fret so we've got the three pom-pom mountains here which we'll be doing in a future episode parts for the quad vickers here at the side each of these sections are the parts for the four inch mountain that we're doing so you can see I've already uh, taken the parts off for two so we'll use these parts for the third gun that we're going to make up now these are the parts that we need from the Pontos set. So obviously the main piece is this new base which has the tread which has the tread plate detail in it. These are the two side plates for the trunnions. We have the elevation wheel that goes underneath the breech. I think the hardest thing that I find with fitting these brass barrels is to make sure that they go on straight. It's uh, quite easy to get them misaligned. So I want a nice flat edge on the... need a nice flat surface there to drill our holes for the barrels. So we've got them nice and smooth. And we just need to drill a hole for the barrels to fit into. And I want to make sure that they're perfectly centred. So, so I've got a pin mounted in, or a needle mounted in the pin vise. And I'll just use that to centre a hole. And then I've got a 0.6 drill. I like to use a motor drill when I'm using fine bits like this. 
I find a pin vise. When I use a pin vise, I break far too many drills. So I can see that the holes are nicely in the middle of the breech. And they will then take the barrel. So I'll go ahead and glue those in. And I'm just using a drop of super glue. This is thick super glue on the barrels. And just make any adjustments that you need to before the super glue goes off. The thick glue, thick super glue is you've got about 40 seconds, something like that, before they go off. It's actually quite tricky to get these nice and level and equal, but uh, it's important that you try. They do look a bit uh, odd if you've got them at different angles, but that's okay, I'm happy with that. There's a couple of sprue attachment points on the sides of the breeches, which are quite prominent if you don't get them cleaned up properly. So I'll just, uh, I'll just spend a bit of time to clean that. So that's all we need to do to that. The next part that I want to clean up is the trumpeter base piece. So we do need to get the part flat so that it will, so that the brass will sit on it nice and smoothly. That's okay. These side wings, they need to come off in a line with this edge here. So we don't take them off from the top. It won't leave enough room for the new uh, tread plate to fit on the side. So that's the trumpeter part as it should look. In readiness for the plate to be put together. I'll just get that out of the way and I've got the soldering iron heated up. I'm going to solder this flat. I don't want to be folding these side wings up um, because that's just going to make it harder to do the soldering work. So I want to take this down. First of all I've got these two parts to fold up and then they need to be soldered to the base. So the first thing I'm going to do is fold these up and I'll apply some solder to the insides just to seal the box and firm it up and then we can get them applied to the foot plate. some flux in there and just add some solder I can put quite a bit in here because I want it to fill this box up really and leave some solder which uh, I'll get to fall down onto the base plate I really must get a new tip for this soldering iron, it's not good anymore. Okay, that's the first one done. Fold the other side up now. These Pontos parts where you fold, where the folds are like a dotted line, they're very, very weak. Um, and they do break very, very easily so soldering them isn't a bad idea it does strengthen them it strengthens the part quite a lot and it's not going to fall apart on itself now so that's where they will fit
that's the part located the tread plate's already been tinned so I'm just going to heat the two parts up and that's the two boxes in and they're nice and solid you could glue these but they'll be a lot more delicate and obviously the solder's a lot lot stronger I'll give those a clean up And that's that one done that's the bases done there next up I want to fit the actual frame for the shell loader which is this part here there's one on either side and again these are handed and we just fold that up to form a channel now I'm going to glue these I did try to solder them in the first gun that I did but I just couldn't get a neat result so I'm gluing these uh, eventually onto the uh, top of these boxes so just fold those up So these go to the front end of the loader you can just feel them just cl clip into place there are two tiny little holes and it's just enough to get them in position they're glued in place now as I said I tried to solder those on the first mounting but I made a complete hash of it really the details too small to uh, avoid at least for me anyway to avoid getting soldered to obscure the detail so I'm just using some extra thin on these frames and we'll just drop them in So with everything lined up here I'll just drop some more of the extra thin super glue into the channel okay so you can see that that was all best done whilst the tread plate was flat on this wooden block uh, if I'd have folded these steps up it would have been a lot more difficult to get this assembly sorted out so with that done the next step is to mount this whole assembly onto the trumpeter plastic part you wouldn't think you could solder metal to wood but uh, I manage to do it quite often so I'll fold this side step down now and then can bring the plate up have to be careful not to disturb this cradle assembly that we've just built we can adjust them once we get the tread plate mounted there's a little piece at the front which folds up fold that piece up at the front to give us a square assembly there 
So in theory, this uh, brass assembly should now fit onto the trumpeter base. So we'll see if it does. That's pretty good. So the side steps fall down the sides, obviously, of the plastic. The other thing that we need to be careful of is to make sure that these slots here in the brass line up with the recess in the trumpeter plastic. And that's to allow the uh, trunnion sides to slot in. So I think that's all going to go together OK. I'll put some glue on the trumpeter part and then we can glue that into position. And I'm avoiding the trunnion slots. I don't want to, to fill those up. So the next thing to do is to prepare the trunnions, which are these parts. And all we need to do with them is just cut this piece of plastic off at the front and make sure that the base of the tab is clean as well. And I'm just going to make sure that they fit into the slots. On one of the other ones that I did, it was a little bit tight and I just had to clear it out. If it doesn't go in properly, the breech won't sit properly and they will all... Uh, the barrels just won't go level. So just easing that tab a little bit lets us uh, slot that in place nice and uh, level. So it's worth doing just to make sure that these parts fit properly. So I can just put the I can just put the gun itself into the trunnion. And what I've found with these is that the pins on the breech are a little bit wide for these holes and it tends to, because it's so close to the edge, because the hole's so close to the edge it's tended to split the plastic. So I just want to ease those out a little bit. You don't want to clear them out so that the barrels are slack, otherwise they just fall down. You want a little bit of friction in just to hold the barrels in the position that you want. And before we mount that onto the platform, we have the elevation wheel. That's what I'm calling the elevation wheel. I don't know whether that's the right term for it. So that's just folded 180 degree bend. It just doubles the thickness of the brass. And then that just fits into the slot between the two breeches. So the squared off end of the elevation mechanism there goes to the back. So we should be able to fit these in place now. Just make sure that's nice and tight and I'll just reinforce that on the inside with some just running some extra thin into the joint just to make sure that they're nice and strong. Okay we're nearly there now so the next piece is this which is the sighting mechanism so it's got a couple of presumably binoculars on the front here and this is quite uh, a tricky part to fold up and that's because you've got to work out which way to fold it and now that I've, I did the first one the wrong way and it ended up upside down. But now that I've got the first one built, 
I can use it as a reference. So the part itself has this top arm which bends down and these parts here which look like seats but I don't know whether they are they bend forward as well so you just have to work out which way to fold these parts so the first thing I'm going to do is take the sights down and again these can all be adjusted once we've fitted the piece then we have a bend forward a bend back and then the seat which is what I'm guessing it is folds down so that's what it should look like when it's folded properly and this mounts onto the front of the trunnions underneath the barrels so I'll do that now you really do need something to hold these parts whilst you're building them So just make sure we get it on the right way around. So there it is in the right position. And you can just make the adjustments that you need to these parts afterwards. So with the sights in place we can then fit these side panels which fits just in here roughly like that and I just want to apply the glue to the top of the plastic I'm just trying to be careful not to get any glue onto the pins here that uh, would otherwise seize the barrels up and you'd be stuck with them in one position Just want to make sure that these plates here are vertical from the front. You can see the uh, curve on the front matches the curve on the front of the shield. We'll just do the same with the other plate on the right hand side. The last thing to do now is to fit the four seats uh, onto the platform for the crew. There are some location holes on the platform for these seats. Once the glue is set up on these tiny parts we can just make slight adjustments to them. The last thing I want to do is to prepare the shield and to do that we just need to replace these plastic sighting ports with uh, some etched brass ones which are these. So the first thing we have to do is to gently remove the plastic and I want to do this carefully because there are some rivets either side which I want to try and preserve and there's just a little bit of flash on the inside here as well so I'll get rid of that Got a lovely bright day today 
as you can see sun shining in there's nothing like sunlight to illuminate the modeling bench That's the new H brass sighting ports in position. So that is uh, one gun finished. So that's the third one I've done so far. I'm going to press on with the other four to make the full setup. And I'll get some photographs at the end just to get some nice close up pictures of those. And I'll get them all primed up and I'll position them on the model, I'm not going to fit them permanently to the model um, but we can get them in position just to see what they look like. So here are three of the guns finished in their bare state before I've primed them and actually I've done a little bit more research, this mechanism at the back here was for priming the fuses on the shells so I'm assuming that the shell was laid in the cradle and and the fuse primer was here at the front. You can see the seats here that I've positioned, they were for the trainers. Uh, so there was an elevation trainer on one side and an angle trainer on the other, each with some binoculars which look through the sighting parts on the front of the shields here. The plate detail is nice as well on the uh, etch brass floor of the mountains. So that's an improvement over the trumpeter part. And although the trumpeter barrels were quite nice and hollowed out, the brass ones uh, do look quite a bit better. And the other advantage with them, of course, is you don't have a nasty mould seam to clean up, which I hate doing on gun barrels. So that's one of the mountings, uh, as I said, in the raw state. And this one has been primed with uh, etching primer. So it just blended everything together quite nicely. And I'm going to leave them uh, in the etching primer. I won't be painting them because, as I say, uh, I will be selling these on. And whoever has them will want to be painting them in the same colour as their uh, particular model. So I'll leave them primed and they'll go out like that. And here's one of the mountings with the shield placed temporarily on the base. Uh, I'm not going to glue these securely because when I sell them on uh, I'll be providing them with the shields separate to the base so that they can be painted and then assembled afterwards. And just comparing them with the trumpeter I think from the front at any rate they don't look that much different um, but the main difference can be seen uh, at the back of the mountains here with the uh, fuse laying apparatus uh, a lot more detailed on the Pontos uh, unit here. And the tread plates a lot better as well. So they are an improvement. It's whether or not you'd have to make the judgment about whether or not it's worth spending the time building them I probably spent uh, I probably spent something like five hours building the seven sets up but it's a personal choice I know that not everyone wants to uh, do the work with the brass uh, and for the benefit that you get maybe in this particular case uh, it's not that much worth it but 
as in all things it's a matter of personal choice it depends what you want to do I like working with uh, brass it's uh, a challenge and although quite a lot of these parts are extremely fiddly uh, for me it just adds to the enjoyment to the personal enjoyment of doing the model for me so there we are I'll get the other three mountings here uh, in some primer then we'll go over to the ship and I'll temporarily mount them on the ship until uh, the replacement 3D printed uh, mountings arrive which I think will be sometime next week okay I'm ready to temporarily place these four inch guns now when I come to uh, replace them I just want to check whether or not the 3D printed guns come with the base plates Trumpeter provide uh, these parts here uh, on the G sprue G10 uh, and they're just base plate rings that fit over these plain uh, circular discs here where the mountings are so I believe that the I'd be surprised if the 3D printed parts don't have those rings uh, but I'll just avoid putting them on the model at this stage just in case I need to be using these plastic parts. So as I said this is just to give an impression of what the model will look like when the guns are finally mounted. There are some photographs of the ship with at least this mount in here having a square plate uh, underneath it. I think it is probably the case that there was a square mounting plate underneath so I might have to make some of those uh, when I come to finally uh, fit these guns. But uh, anyway let's just put these into position. So we'll start with the number 7. I believe that when not in use these guns were actually stowed uh, facing forwards so that's what I'll do uh, with the model for the time being some of the mounting holes for these are a bit on the tight side so I'm just easing them out a little bit I can't afford to be forcing these guns down they're very delicate <laughs> and it'd be easy to destroy them uh, using any force to get them into position. They probably just need to sit down a little bit more but I'm not going to force them uh, because I'm going to have to get them out again to uh, change them uh, and I don't want to damage them. So here are the 4 inch guns. All 7 in position. And I'll get some close-ups of those uh, for the end of the video for you. Okay, so that's the first of the secondary armament done with the 4-inch guns. Uh, next time I'll build the 5 UP mounts, the rocket launcher mounts. Uh, there's one for B turret, it fits on top of B turret when we come to do that. And then there are 4 mountings on the shelter deck here as well. I'll also build the Quad Vickers guns which are from the Pontos set but I've also received this week for review some parts from MicroMaster in New Zealand. They're 3D printed parts and I've had uh, from Simon at MicroMaster for Quad Vickers mountings to review. And then next Friday I will have done the rest of the secondary armament 
uh, including building the four quads from the Pontos set, even though I'm going to be using the uh, MicroMaster 3D printed ones in the end. So a similar situation to uh, what I've done with these uh, four inch guns. They'll be replaced, but I wanted to show you how they go together from the Pontos set. I know that not everybody wants to go to the expense uh, of buying extra 3D parts for models when, uh, let's face it, these are already quite expensive enough with the base kit and the Pontos set. So I get that. So that's why I'll be building the quad mountings from the Pontos set. And we'll also have a look at what Trumpeter provide in the base kit as well. So I hope uh, that'll work that if I do the videos using the base Trumpeter kit, the Pontos parts, and also where I've got them, the uh, 3D printed parts, I hope that works and then you can choose for yourselves which uh, path you want to follow. So that's it for another episode. Uh, I'll be back uh, next week both with a review of the MicroMaster parts that I've received for review uh, and also the build of the rest of the secondary armament. In the meantime, as you can see, we've got an unusually sunny day today, so I'm going to take advantage of that and get some fresh air, get out in the garden for a bit. But whatever you're doing uh, yourselves, look after yourselves and stay safe. Enjoy your modelling if that's what you're doing over the next week. Have a good one, everybody, and I'll see you in another seven days. Bye for now.